and Mr. Emily Tinsley Stearns here, and today we have flipped the script, and Graham, who is usually behind the camera, is in front of the camera. Welcome, Graham. Hello. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, of course. Well, you did something really cool and a first time thing for Canvas. You are now officially drone certified. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Very cool. So talk to us a little bit about the drone certification process. Sure. Yeah. So, so when I first started, I started back in November um, and Trey let me know, oh, hey, we, we want to use a drone eventually and, and get some cool footage. Um, and so he actually had a, a course, he had signed up for a course online, uh, and you can go through that at your own pace. And it basically just walks you through all of the different things you need to know for the certification. Um, and then it'll, it'll quiz you along the way too, uh, which is really helpful. And then it'll give you practice exams so you can keep taking the exam over and over just to make sure you have all of the, the information down. Nice. Um, but yeah, it's... <laughs> It's a lot more information and a lot more in-depth information than I expected it would be. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot about knowing uh, different airports, uh, airspaces, uh, so you're not <laughs> interfering with, it with airplanes. Um, it's a lot about knowing, yeah, exactly. Um, a lot about knowing meteorology stuff, so how the weather can affect things, um, how you're supposed to balance the drone, uh, how to read basically uh, it's called a sectional chart which is just a, an aeronautical uh, chart so you know where the different airspaces are and where the different restricted areas are nice. um, yeah so it's a lot of a lot of really detailed things that we probably won't need to know most of the time right <laughs> um, but for the certification it, it uh, is really helpful and obviously to get fully certified to for commercial purposes uh, that's something that you need yeah, very cool. So what was the most interesting fact you learned during the training process? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, most interesting fact. So I, I had always sort of known about weather, yeah. but like temperature inversions and things like that yeah. and, how, and how actually cool air is thought to be calmer but it usually means there's precipitation and things like that. So an unstable air uh, is hotter usually, but it uh, creates basically just turbulence above and not necessarily below. And it's, uh, yeah, really interesting facts about, about weather, which, nice. um, yeah, is helpful for, for drone flying, but also just in the future to read clouds and things like that. Yeah, very cool. And so now we'll be able to use this for videography and photography. Talk a little a little bit about what you're dreaming of in terms of ways that we might use the drone for Canvas. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so obviously Go Live is a really perfect uh, use for all of this. And that's something that, that you've had in mind and that Trey has had in mind uh, for a little while now. Um, but being able to fly a drone some, in some beautiful location because there's so many of them across Colorado uh -huh. um, and be able to get these really nice overhead shots. Um, we can take photos and video with the camera that's on the drone. So we can get up really high, get into places that we wouldn't be able to just with uh, uh, ourselves. Um, and then things like the Canvas Guide to Go Live too. So uh, before we would just sort of follow people around with the camera, it would be all handheld uh, and we'd sort of talk to them that way. But now if it's, let's say Ryan Brown was talking about mountain biking, we could take a drone and actually follow him while he's mountain biking uh, and get some really cool action shots for them. Um, so it's a lot of a lot of really exciting possibilities. Uh, in the past, you to get shots like that, you would have to rent a helicopter, <laughs> bring a bunch of gear into a helicopter, yes. um, and then and then film that way. Uh, but with a drone, it's so light, so small, uh, pretty easy to use. Um, that we'll be able to to really make the most of it. Very cool. That's awesome. Well, congratulations, Graham. We're so excited. This is, as you mentioned, something we've been dreaming about for a while. So you're helping make that vision be a reality. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to uh, to have done it. And thank you for supporting me while I <laughs> while I got that certification. Yeah. Um, it was definitely a process. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cool thing to have. Very cool. All right. Awesome. So now we're going to do a little trivia if you're up for it. You ready? Yeah, yeah, as ready as I can be. All right, very good. How about we plan on, we'll do three questions from our, I should have known that game. All right, sounds good. All right, good. sounds good. Here's the first one. How long did Sleeping Beauty sleep? Oh, wow. Oh, yes, that's definitely an I should know that kind <laughs> of thing. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, this is total guess. 150 years? Oh, so close. 100 years. 100 years, okay. 100 years, yeah. All right, so this is going to go to the adult beverage category, which also seems fitting for this time of year. What popular cocktail contains rum, sugar, lime, club soda, and mint leaves? Is it a mojito? Yes. <laughs> well done, sir. All right, okay. now here's a tiebreaker for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to keep with the adult beverage theme. In what field is a sommelier an expert? Ah, uh, wine. Yes, all right. That, okay. I think two out of three. That's really, really good. Yeah, okay. that's better, better than I expected. So that's, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that's awesome. Very cool. Well, Graham, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate all of your hard work, and it's really fun to see you on this side of the screen. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for joining us, and we'll be back again next week as we continue to enjoy being Canvas.